Hi, my name is Kira, and this is my 2013 Nissan NV200. I freaking love this van. It has a fridge, it has a stove, it has a battery, I have an inverter, I have a DC to DC charger, I have a roof vent fan, I have a diesel heater. Some stuff might be a bit broken right now, but I just love this van. I just want to hang on to it forever. The longer I've had it, the more of a connection I felt to it. And what's so cool about this van is it's not so different than myself. Recently, I've just been going down this crazy rabbit hole about matter and how we're all connected, how we're actually made out of all the same stuff. Carl Sagan said, we're made of stardust and uh, that includes this freaking van right here. And you might think it's a bit of a stretch to kind of compare myself to a van, but hey, this is a Van Life channel and uh, this is what we're here for. It's sometimes easy to feel small in the big city or out in the mountains. We're surrounded by so much grandeur. There's so much to take in, so much to think about, so much to learn. And I know that everything out here, the rocks, the trees, the stars, the sun, they're all made out of the same ingredients. Over decades of scientific exploration and discovery, Scientists have come up with a map, a map of ingredients that explains everything we see and experience on a daily basis. This map is called the Standard Model of Particle Physics. Yeah, I've come across what is called the Standard Model of Physics, which is when I was going to school, we had the periodic table of elements. And now there's like the standard model, which includes all the particles and all the forces. So I've got my notebook. Now, I'm not a physicist. I'm just a curious person with a van trying to make sense of the world. But the standard model, it's like the ultimate cheat sheet for understanding what everything is made of. Particles, tiny invisible things that combine in different ways to create everything. We're all made of atoms. The atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and the neutrons can be broken down even further into things called quarks. So just to reiterate, protons and neutrons are made up of quarks, and electrons belong to a group called leptons. Everything that we see and experience, everything we touch, everything we feel, are made up of quarks and leptons. See, think about this rock. It's solid, it's heavy, it's real, but to, at its core, it's mostly empty space. The quarks and electrons are so small that they're like specks of dust in a cathedral. And yet, they're the reason why the rock exists at all. Now, this is where things get wild. Particles can be force carriers. And force carriers are particles that make magnets stick to the metal. So these particles aren't just sitting there, they interact. They're constantly talking to each other. They're exchanging little packets of energy called force carriers. That's why this magnet sticks to the metal. It's all about the conversation between particles. The coolest realization I've had about magnets sticking to metal is the interconnectivity of everything. Because unexpectedly, to me, the force carrier responsible for magnets sticking to metal is the particle named the photon. We all know the photon. The photon's responsible for light, but also it's the force carrier for the electromagnetic force, which means light essentially is responsible for making this magnet stick to metal. This blows my mind to think that light is responsible for magnets. I never put that together before. It's blowing my mind. I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. And here's the thing. The standard model doesn't explain everything. Like, 
why is there dark matter? Why is there more matter than antimatter in the universe? We don't really understand. And that's okay because science isn't about having all the answers. It's about asking the right questions. Why haven't we been able to find a force carrier particle for gravity? Especially since gravity is the most relatable force we can experience. We've found force carriers for the electromagnetic force, the strong force, the weak force. We've even found the Higgs boson, which is responsible for the mass of the particles in the standard model. But the graviton? Maybe we'll never find it. Or maybe we will. And maybe we'll be one step closer to understanding the theory of everything. fancy lab or a PhD to discover these things, to wonder about the world. You just need some curiosity. So the next time you look at the world around you, whether it's a mountain, a cup of coffee, or even your own hands, or this van here, just remember there's a whole universe that's just waiting to be explored. You don't have to travel far. There's so much exploration that can be done in your own backyard, even if you're stuck in a wheelchair. Just your own hands are full of science, things to discover. So thanks for listening to me on this video, even though it's a little bit unconventional compared to what I've been doing. But I feel like this is more true to myself. I've been wanting to talk about science for so long. I'm just trying to be more authentic and this is who I really am. Anyways, thanks for coming on this journey with me. And even if we don't have all the answers, I'll see you down the road. I apologize. <coughs> I'm sick right now. But I wanted to film this video so badly, I didn't want to wait. I've been sick for so long and it's just, I was sick of waiting to get better. So you're just gonna have to deal with my weird nasally voice and my mucus. I'm so sorry. Ooh. Is that a little bit better? No, not really. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's get through this.